So we're going to talk a little bit about the autonomic nervous system. That is that part of the brain, that subconscious, that kind of regulates when things are good and when things are not so good. It's otherwise known as a threat response. There's two aspects to it. The sympathetic system that detects threats. And then there's the parasympathetic system that detects when things are not threatening and things are kind of good in life. So there is different responses that the central nervous system or the autonomic nervous system will send out to the body when we are sensing a threat or just the opposite. For instance, we can tap into these responses simply by looking at a person's range of motion. So what we might do is use any of those tests such as the standing toe tet touch, the shoulder flexion or shoulder abduction or internal rotation. We also have the total body rotation. These are all range of motion assessments that gauge how far your body can move. When there's a sympathetic response, a threat is, is sensed, the body is going to restrict movement. We're going to draw inward in a way, in a protective mechanism that has been occurring for millions of years. So nowadays we don't have saber-toothed tigers or anything like that. Instead we have other elements in, in stimuli that come into play that threaten our existence that reduce our range of motion. Such as if you're sitting all day and your joints start to get compressed and restricted and muscles tighten up to keep you in that seated position. So as an example, we're just going to show what perhaps strength levels do. So with this shoulder out by our side, I'm going to have Lexi push up against my hand and I'm just going to do a simple muscle test. So as she pushes up against me, I'm pulling down against her and testing her strength levels. Pretty solid, obviously a very strong person. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her, her joint of her thumb, or maybe I'll do the, even the opposite hand. Just to prove that we're not dealing with just the left side, the right side, I'm going to take her thumb and I'm just going to push it into her wrist. So in essence, I'm closing the space around this joint. Meanwhile, the nerve endings have just sensed that there is more compression and restriction in that joint. And let's just see what happens to her force production. So bringing her hand up, push up against me, and instantly it seems like a parlor trick, but she's strong and she can, she can really fight against me. And in that time, instantly she felt how her strength levels had been reduced. So then that begs to kind of ask this question, well, what is strength? Strength, yeah, we've been training strength to try and build hypertrophy in the muscle and make the muscles bigger so we can produce more force. That is one way of gaining strength. But if we're not able to utilize that force and the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system is going to regulate it so I don't produce as much force in the strong muscles I already have, then isn't strength training all about being able to get the brain to utilize as much force as we can in any given moment? So strength training is, yes, building muscles, but it's also giving the body what it needs in terms of structure, alignment, spacing in joints, and the proper stimuli. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of mobility back in her thumb and give a little bit of space, get it moving again. Many of the mobility drills Every one of them is all about gaining space and movement in the body so that we can have greater levels of strength. So bring your arm back up, push up against me, and boom, she's back on up. Again, it feels like a parlor trick. You can do it with a whole bunch of friends at some dinner party if you want to and get a lot of giggles out of it. But it's amazing what the central nervous system can do in regards to upregulating strength levels or force production or suppressing it. And there's another way we can do it is simply by putting her out of alignment. So with your arm up like so, and you're going to hold against me, but I want you to just let your hips go off to the side. So now we're out of alignment and you're going to push up against me again. And there she goes. So by bringing the body back into more posturally aligned positions and training it to have that better sense of balance, as soon as we put her back in and pushes up against me, she's got better force production. So this could be even a simple thing as turning out one foot. Let's just see what happens if you rotate out. Hold your arm up again, fight against me, and she's just having a hard time bringing the feet back in. So. Strength exercises for the sake of strength can be really good at building muscles, but if they're pulling you out of alignment, 
it's actually counterproductive. Yes, you're getting stronger, bigger muscles, but if you can't utilize that strength because they're pulling you out of alignment, what good is that? You're just gonna be forced to compensate in various ways, and that just leads to more chance of injury. Now another one is actually your emotional state, which we don't delve too much into the book, but it's worth mentioning because by having a very positive outlook and a positive mindset, we can actually create really good responses in the body in terms of strength and performance. So Lexi, I want you to think of a really sad day and, and just go into that memory that you had of a really bad day with and then bring your arm up and hold up against me. Okay, cool. I want you to kind of put that memory aside and I want you to think of something really cool, something that you just got you smiling, this was awesome, like the best day of your life. And then bring the arm back up again and hold. <laughs> so, emotions, structure, joint spacing, these are all things that are going to either upregulate force production, better organic function, or they're going to create a suppressing threat response. So this is how you can gauge the exercises or the movements in your program. It's instantaneous. It is almost traveling at the speed of light. The messages from your body to your brain and back down again are the fastest way that we can get a feedback whether what we're doing in our program is beneficial. Now sometimes you'll get no response and maybe it's because the stimuli isn't enough. You're not challenging yourself enough and you're not going to get any positive or negative outcome with your tests. Now I've been doing strength tests with her shoulder just holding it up but we could also perform any strength exercises like a push-up or a pull-up or, or something that is somewhat taxing. You do so many repetitions and then you retest after doing a different exercise, come back and do that same movement. Did it feel harder or was it easier? That's another way of gauging it through the strength tests. Now range of motion, we could pretty much do the same. Let's just have you uh, face that direction if you would. And you're just going to, in a very gradual way, just bring your arm forward and up overhead and get a sense of your range of motion. Not trying to muscle through, but where is your shoulder range of motion? Cool, all right. Now, just for the heck of it, we're not gonna go back to the, the thumb, we'll just do the elbow. We're just going to apply some compression into the elbow and kind of jam up that joint a little bit. And now let's just check range of motion here. Do you feel a change at all? Slightly. A slight change. All right. So there's been a little bit change there. And what you're going to find is there's going to be one movement that is going to be probably more telling than other movements. That's why you've got a selection to go through. And everyone's gonna be a little bit different than the next person. So it's your role to find the test that works for you. Whether it is, is that better now? Yeah. Whether it is uh, that shoulder flexion, the shoulder abduction, internal rotation, total body rotation, any of the ones listed in the book, give them a shot and see which one is the right one for you. And there's also the peripheral vision test, which is trying to find where you can see your fingers while staring straight ahead. As we get threatened, we go into tunnel vision. So that sympathetic response is going to contract or constrict our peripheral vision. So we can actually use that. I can see my fingers here, I do an exercise, I get a threat response, and now I can see my fingers here for the first time. Everything's restricted. The opposite would happen if I have something that gives me a good response. So try these out. There's no necessarily perfect one assessment for everybody. So find the one that's right for you, do an exercise, and then retest. And pretty soon, you'll have a whole list of the movements that are gonna be benefiting you for the time being. And then a little bit later, you wanna do the same thing again. And if you really get into it, you could do it every single time. But at least this is your compass to point you in the right direction.